Last bit. Long piece. As promised, thanks to the person who gave me some positive feedback on the last one. So I've been resussing out my long stitch for this purpose. Oh, round stitch, sorry. I tucked it out in the past as a stitch to use on bags. But now I've kind of changed it up a bit in terms of the spacing between the stitches, the holes rather, because there's lots of stitches in each hole. Because of the nature of the fabric, it's a very tight weave. It's not like old cotton or something where you could put lots of stitches through it and you wouldn't be breaking fibres. Lots of holes rather. If you put lots of holes through this stuff, you're guaranteed to be breaking fibres. So the way of this out how to begin it. I'm doing doubles now. I started doing singles. It lies flatter when I do singles, but just a question of how long it takes. So I'm going through the hole, leaving about a centimetre. Whoops, came through, back through the hole, same hole. I'm not tying any knots in this because the little it wrong again. Tying knots and it makes it uh, less smooth and stuff. And of course the advantage of this kind of <coughs> round stitch is that if I've cut my line a bit, a bit long or if I want to bring it in a bit I can um, do so without having to do anything drastic, without having to really change anything. I just like, roll more around. But move the stitches further, further up the sail. So it allows for kind of adjustment. It's quite a, you know, a lot, a lot of times the old timey techniques are the right ones to use if you're like me, a bit of a hack. You know, not a real sail maker. I don't. Well, of course, I'm a real sail maker. I'm making a real sail, but I don't have a, you know, a modern sail maker's workshop available to me. One of them keeps pulling through. So I've left a bit more. I've left like two and a half centimetres almost. So here there's a lot of little things like here you've got to make sure they're both on the same side. Just going around at once. I can pull that all through in just one tiny little tug quite easily. Be a bit careful. So so far that's twice through the hole. Third time through the hole. And it just there's a lot of ways to do it. Put two twists around here. One, two, of course you can't see that because my hand's in the way. But what I've done is I've twisted two times around that loop. Now as I pull that through, I just hold on to the tail. You know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Just find a way to do it that doesn't leave big lumpy bits. And now I just tail. It's a really short tail the length of the width of my fingernail. That's just going to get wrapped up. It's going to have layer, layer after layer over it. So I'll go through the hole once and then through the same hole. So there's one stitch at an angle and one that's square to the um, line of the luff. Well, the clue, sorry. Whatever it is. I can't remember all these nautical words, no one uses them anymore. Yeah. I haven't warmed up. I just knocked off from my regular job. Usually leave this kind of stitching work. Until after the sun's gone down, 
But I'm a bit tired today, so I'm not going to do any woodwork. I'm going to do a bit of this instead. I've got paddles on the go. Uh, could do a little bit of a tour of my paddle making enterprise. Not that it's an enterprise per se, not yet anyway. Been making forms lately, sandpaper forms, basically shaped sanding blocks that will carve specific curves or V sections. When I find the the angle I really like for a leading edge I'll model a sanding block on on that paddle that has the best leading and trailing edge of course because each edge is both leading and trailing not like a sail on the symmetrical paddles anyway the next one I'm doing the Minimax has got a two way symmetry instead of the usual um, four-way symmetry of the type of paddle the old green and tight I quite like the four-way symmetry the V the V shape in the bubbly bit if you know what I'm talking about probably don't I have to tell you about it when I'm actually doing that it gives you something to put the angle of your hand right when you're holding onto the blade without having to do something funny with your hand. So the one with the two-way symmetry I'm kind of compromising that functionality for hopefully greater propulsion and um, giving it a longer handle so it's to be a fair to medium weather ocean paddle with distance in mind to make it extremely light I'll have a rock garden paddle with the boat as well landing paddle storm paddle high winds paddle it'll be all of those as in a small short handled V section blade low wind profile a little bit stiffer than the slightly heavier for how long it'll be in the ocean distance model, the Mini Max. Call it Mini Max because it's um, quite short for what it is, and it's got wide blades. So it's got a large amount of push in it, so it should be quite efficient to use slowly in kind of a relaxed way. Meaning, basically, it's it's a higher gear. It's in a higher gear. Storm paddles tend to be in lower gears, so you have to like psh, 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 bump it out a bit more if you want to actually move. I'm hoping Mini Max will be a good sailing pedal too. I think she might be a bit of a fair weather sailor, Mini Max. It's a good pedal nonetheless. It's good to have a fair weather one. fair to medium bit too much windage for a storm battle she should be pretty good in a fair to medium blow so this is the round stitch goes on, goes on after a while gets faster Got to make sure each one lays down in the right angle that it was intended to, otherwise you won't have the right tension on it. Each time I'm doing even tension. Not much tension on each, any particular stitch. It works by um, just grabbing onto the string. Nothing actually goes through the string. Occasionally something might a little bit, but not so much as to prevent it from being able to have a little bit of play within the sheath. Uh, I'm not 
not sure if that's the correct way to do it or not. But I'm just following my intuition on that. We're going to see. Perhaps the next sale I'll do differently. Hopefully I won't have to um, recut the trailing edge on the left, next one. The next one I'm going to be uh, recutting. What's the edge that goes along the boom? It's not the clue. Is it the clue or is this the clue? Um, I'm using a dental floss for the string. You get different kinds of dental floss and they have different properties. But in general they make quite good sailcloth and bag string. Thread rather. Um, not a particularly stout thread but it's quite a strong one. I should have actually started up here and worked back because I did a whole long one up that way last night where I should have been going up and down like usually would have been doing a bit of a bit of a stitch go up for half the thread and go down for the other half of the thread so I get some whose tension lines run that way and some whose tension lines run that way And where I think there's insufficient tension in the string, sometimes I put in some with tension lines that are extra far, as in miss a hole or put the holes further apart. I'm not sure what that's doing, but we shall see. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do two in each hole this time around. Be a tricky job if you didn't have good eyesight, good lighting. Getting close to being done with this thread, so I can show you the routine I have for tailing it off. It's quite it's some quite big gaps in this section. A bit of market testing, root market research, you know, just trying to see sometimes I've got the holes quite close together, sometimes I've got them a bit further apart, and see where it fails, learn from it. Because I do intend to use this in sufficiently uh, strong conditions to uh, make it fail, you know, I'll work as hard as I can. <coughs> 120 kilometres on Evans Bay today, apparently. Would have loved to have been out there. Nice. It's a real good place to go and experience the wind because you get the wind blowing like it was today. You just get out there, maybe try and fight it if you like, but if you fail, you just get pushed back and uh, swept up on some little rocks. They're quite nice rocks, and uh, and the swells aren't uh, large enough to be dangerous. Just little little short steep harbour waves. They get pretty big, but you know nothing to write home about. Be more worried about damaging the boat, trying to get it in somewhere nice. Uh, well, <clears throat> we shall see how this goes. Hopefully I'll be able to at least reach with it. Okay, well I'm going to finish this one off a tad early. No, it won't. Wasted string. Well, a lot of tension on this, but I don't want any tension 
very much on each on any individual bit of string. That's why so many stitches. There's also the abrasion thing because we've got a bunch of stitches sitting underneath a bunch of other stitches, and they're not the same bit of string. So when you get some abrasion, not only is it easy just to work a bit, a few more stitches in, but oh well, I'm finishing off here. Always finish off by going through the same hole. There's a reason for that. If you're going on an angle and then you finish off by tucking in that way, then it can just pull out. If it goes in a 90 degrees, kind of puts the brakes on a bit. So, just go in. Uh, under there, so, so it back in on itself. Quite hard to push the needle through. And this is where the string actually gets, oh sorry, the thread actually gets into the to the string a bit. But because it's just going through like this, it's not providing any um, resistance to it moving up and down. The resistance is the tension and the friction on it. Um, it's like bamboo, you know, if it flex, it's going to be a lot stronger. If it can't flex, there'll be one point where you've got a, a stitch in the wrong place and then the whole tension of the sail is on that stitch, which is not like movement in every system. Some of these systems don't have any movement on them to speak of, but this one does. So I'll pretty much just keep taking it in there as long as I can. I started out using a lot of knots and stuff, but there's kinds of stitching where you need the knots and then there's kind of stitching when you don't. And to my mind this is one where you don't. Oh, we're going to see how it goes. It'll be the first time I will have used it in this kind of a thing. You know, it takes something sharp to finish off with because it leaves it tidy. If you don't like sharpening things you can just use a, a regular um, plastic razor blade. Radio. There you go.